Stu. Right. We're Stu and John, but picking up where we were. Lord God the Father, I just ask you to bless this time, Lord God. Yes, I'm just down in the dumps, Lord God. I pray now for this Bible study. I pray, Lord, for the bikers, Lord God, for preaching and the gospel checks that we have for them, Lord God, and make a way. Lord God, just pray for a soulmate for me, Lord, to help me. But Lord, right now, we got to look into your word. we got to think about the Lord Jesus, because you may come. I want you pleased with us. Lord God, put my sins under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Cleanse me, for Jesus' sake, I pray. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. All right, so Genesis 22, turn that on. Yeah. Genesis 22, 1. We've been talking about... We've been talking about the temptations. We've been talking about the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of eyes. We've seen Eve. We've seen David. We see even in the Lord Jesus Christ, the devil tried to attack. And pray for me, the Saturday, hopefully, I got, there's a guy who thinks that the devil and Jesus are brothers and will try, hopefully try to correct them with that. Mormon philosophy. Mm. And what we're going to look at, we're going to close on this thing of tempting, temptation. And we'll get back to John next time, Lord willing. But temptations in the Bible is one of them things, again, there, there's false doctrine. In 22 1 of Genesis, the Bible says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. And said unto him, Abraham, he said, Behold, here am I. Now the temptation, we're not going to read the whole chapter, is Abraham, you love Isaac, your only son. Sacrifice him at a place I tell you. And we know this is the story of Jehovah and the Lord Jesus Christ. And the main thing to look at is God will use temptation in our lives to see where we stand. Now, Eli favored his sons, the priest favored his sons more than he did with God. And what God is finding out with Abraham, and what Abraham is to find out, where do you stand in your... Because children can be a God. Where do you stand? And we see in chapter 22 that Abraham gets up right up in their own morning, gets Isaac up, and they head off. And I, Abraham is going to kill Isaac. And Hebrews tells us that Abraham not only believed God, but he, he's going to believe God. Had he killed Isaac, Hebrews tells us he's going to sit there and wait for Isaac to be resurrected. Because he believed that Isaac was the promise. And God, if I slay Isaac according to what you tell me to do, not only are you going to slay him, but you're also going to resurrect him. That's the faith that's counted. Now let me give you a little side note here. Genesis 22, in the, in the religion of Islam, it's Abram and Ishmael, not Isaac. And that is totally wrong. I've seen. Exodus 17, 2. And these are all in order. And I feel a sneeze. Exodus 17, 2. So, God will tempt us to show where we are and are, are we doing good or are we doing bad? That's a good temptation. Because it shows us our strength and our maturity where we may need work. Exodus 17, verse 2. Wherefore the people chide, argued, complained with Moses, and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said to him, why chide ye with me? Wherefore do you tempt the Lord? Now here's a temptation. God has taken care of Israel. We're 17 chapters into Exodus. 
and they're complaining against God and the tide of tempting has changed. It is the people of God who's tempting. Go give us water. So, this is a temptation of the lust of the flesh that we talked about. God's already given them food. God has already given them water. God has already given them their provincials in their life. And they were not satisfied. So they tempted God in sin. Sin can be a temptation of God for our material walk. Sin, a, a temptation can be a sin against God for not being content. Numbers 14.22 Numbers 14.22 This is God speaking. Numbers 14.22 But all these men, all those men which have seen my glory, everything that God has done for them, and my miracles, which I did in Egypt, all the signs and wonders, the book of Exodus, in the wilderness, water out of the rock, gave them water, gave them food, the manna, and have tempted me these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice. All right, they've gone to God. We need food. We need water. God, we need food. We need water. Though you've already taken care of our food and water, they are tempting God with sin. They're not content. They've already got food. God's already given them manna. They got tired of the manna. God's already given the water out of the rock, and that's not good enough. And God said, these ten times you sinned against me. And the temptation is a sin that, you know what, you, you're not pleased where your life is. Now, I am pleased, I am overjoyed where God has me in my life serving him. And I need to help me for things to help me out. And it's not a temp tempting God because I still acknowledge the blessings God has given me as wives. And the money blessings God is taking care of and, and doing things in my life which are beyond thanking. I mean, the brand new farmer's market. Like, wow. But, and you know what? I got to acknowledge that is too much of more than what we can handle. And hopefully God will see one day, yeah, he needs help. What he did to Moses. Moses went up to God one day, you know, there's just too many of them. And God helped. Temptation is they've already had food. They've already seen God work in their life. They just, and then what we leave later in Paul's writing in Hebrews, we leave, they did not believe. You can ask for God. The Bible says that. Ask in the name of Jesus, but believe. The next time you want to ask God, believe, listen, I know God, listen, I know God's going to answer me. I know God's hearing me. The problem with them, they're thinking the flesh. They're thinking of the eyes. They're thinking of, woe is me. Just put something on the table. And not glorify God. That's a sin. Deuteronomy 6.16 And there's a realm of temptation, and there's a realm of where is that fine line? Where do you stand with God? How do you stand with God? In Deuteronomy 6.16, Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Massa. There is a forbearance of tempting God. God 
And I've said this over and over, and yeah, I pray for a thing for God. God is not that bubblegum machine that you put the quarter in, you turn the dial, and then you get mad because you got the red bubblegum, you didn't get the blue one. That's not God. Sometimes when you put your quarter in the machine, you turn the dial, you open, sometimes the, the candy's not there. And we cannot, James says, we cannot ask God for the lust of our flesh. He said, he, we, we have not because we ask not. We're, we're to ask God. And then he says that we may consume upon the lust. There are prayers that we ask God or could ask God. It's just, just for my desire, my flesh. my, And then Philip, that's a sin. God, give me a rich car and give me money and give me great things so I can be happy and luxury and all that. Well, you ain't going to use that for God. And that's what Israel is doing in the wilderness. God, just give us food. You had the manna. And it's recorded in the Scripture. They got tired of manna. Well, you were living on it. it was, the Bible says in Psalms it was angel food. Be content where we are. And if we do have other needs, seek God and believe in that He is able. Or if He's not able because it is a lustful request, all right, move on to something else. God will say yes, no, not now. And until He says no, keep praying. He says no and shuts that door. Okay, next. Psalm 78.18. Now that reads really good. Psalm 78.18. See, God tempted Abraham. Yes, he did. And he wanted to see what position Abraham was in his life. When you tempt God to, to well, see the power of God, and I've, I've been there and I've sinned that way. Come on, God, let's see how powerful you are. That's a sin. That needs to be confessed. Because God is all powerful. 17, 18. And they tempted God in their heart, asking meat to their lust. Now, I don't know why, every time I go to think of a name, as soon as I think of that name, it goes out my brain. Um, oh, the missionary of the children and all that, I can't think of his name. Well, you can have a hunger and a thirst for food. And say, God, I need food. I'm starving. But what's the passage say? Asking to their lust. God, I I'm tired of the manna. I need a steak. That's lust. When you go on... And I don't want to say the ability of God, because God can do everything. But you're not happy with what God's giving you right now. And you want more for your appetite. That's a temptation. That's a lust. That is a sin. And like I said, if people say with me, I, I want a wife. I need to help me. I need to help. It, it's not of a lustful, carnal nature. But if I were to say, Lord, you know, give me two, three, four wives for my sexual appetite, mm. that's... And I, if I were to say, Lord, well, give me a position at the farmer's market where everybody can see me and everybody can acknowledge me and everybody can say, wow, what a great man he is. That's gone beyond what a Christian is. 
That's, look at me, how great I am. Mm. Come on, God, uh, go against the city of Daytona Beach Police Department and the lawyers and the attorneys and all that to show them how great I am. That's tempting God. That it ain't about you. Now, pray for God. Say, God, I want to preach the gospel. I understand that the laws of the nation is I can be at this spot and I can preach legally according to the Supreme Court. Lord, I want to be there with your gospel. That's not tempting God. That's not going for the lust of the flesh. And people, why are you there? I'm there to preach the gospel. I'm going there today to preach, hopefully, to the bikers because I want the bikers to be saved. I want them to get the gospel. I want to get them the tracks. And now if I would turn around and say, God, I want to witness, give me the, the biggest and best and shiniest Harley Davidson that there is. And I don't even know how to ride a bike. <laughs> now you see the temptation. Israel had manna. Manna took care of them. But they got tired of fried manna. They got tired of uh, boiled manna. They got tired of instant manna. They got tired of manna cake and manna. Now like somebody like me, I don't have a wife and it's... And it's not a temptation to say, Lord, and how about this prayer? Lord, I want to know more of your word. Lord, I want to do more. Lord, I want to be, here I am, Lord, use me. That's not temptation. That's a, listen, anybody say, Lord, use me, that's proper and that's scripture. Lord, I want, I want a house that has three bathrooms. You, well, you don't need three bathrooms. Be happy with the one you got. See, you're going up above and beyond the capability. That, listen, if God's going to bless you more than what you deserve, He'll do it without your asking. If God, get, listen, God has given me more of the farmer's market. <coughs> I never asked for that. I asked, <coughs> Lord, I just want to preach the gospel. I just want to get gospel tracts out. I want to reach the people, shut the DJ up, so we can get the gospel out. And then where we are now is like, wow. And if we could get more help, and we could get more people who want, want to serve, and want to do right, and correctly do what the... It's there. There's a possibility. So there's a fine line of temptation of sin, and there's a fine line where God says, ask. In the name of Jesus, ask, seek not. But when it crosses the line of the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes that we looked at, for your desires, for your fancies, God, I'd like to have ice cream. And he gives you those little ice pops that you know you cut off the end. You guys say, "Oh no, no, I want a sundae with whipped cream and nuts and a cherry and hot." All right, now you're going lustful desires. Mm -hmm. well Be happy with what God wants to give you, and you realize what God gives you. If you are pleased and you are happy with what God gives you, then He'll give you more as you're able to handle. You want a bigger house? Well, you want more taxes? You want more to take care of? I got into that trap. People say, you know, take your rent money and buy a house. I did that. Uh, who was supposed to pay for the roof? Who was supposed to pay for the furnace? Oh, me? Not the landlord? You are the landlord. That was a temptation. That was sin. So, uh, Psalm 78. Uh, okay. Psalm 78, 41. And we're looking at the story of Israel. Look at the story. I can't turn the page. God had already provided. Now, I've got to thank God. I've known some people who, who dined on bologna. <laughs> now, I have always had good things to eat. I haven't had the best. I don't enjoy a steak. I enjoy a good pork ribs. 
But I am blessed and wondered that my house is filled with food. That when I go grocery shopping and I come home later in the afternoon, I am searching the whole kitchen because I got a whole brand new kitchen of food and I can't find nothing to eat. So I'm going to ask God, I want any uh, steaks and I need. Well, you got a house full. And I go beyond the measure, okay, let's go out to eat. God just provided you a, 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 a house full of food. Now we go out to eat. And then you complain at the end of the week, end of the month. I ain't got no money. Well, you filled your house with food, then you went out to eat. And we're all guilty there. Psalm 78, 41. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Israel set forth, they're on their way to the promised land. They said, let's do a U-turn and go back to Egypt. God's not capable. You see what the temptation there, there? They did not believe God and they limited God. Your temptations may limit all what God has for your life. I don't want you to live on steak and eggs. I may want you to go to a missionary field where you live on rice. I don't want rice. Then I can't use you anymore. Well, Lord, I want to go where people want, people are going to look, I want great numbers of people to look at me when I, that's not what I have for you. Well, I want great numbers, well, I can't use you then. Because I've only got one person or two people going to sit down and listen to the Bible with you. I'm perfectly happy. And I say, Lord, there was another woman on Facebook. I'd like to be there. I ain't there for her to be a number. I want her to come over here and sit down. I want her to hear the Bible and I want her to grow. I don't want her to just get, look, I got, you know, got more people. I'm not, you know, I'm not there for that. I don't want to limit God. God said, you know what? He's faithful with one, I'll send him another. He's faithful with that, I'll send him another. Where are we content when we come to temptation where God has us? I am perfectly happy teaching the Bible here. I am perfectly happy going, preaching the gospel. Like I said, the only, temp, the only content I have is, is I don't have them help me in my life. But that's physical, that, that's, that's human. But in the realm of God and serving God, I am pleased. Yes, I would love to have somebody else here and learn the Bible because my heart wants people to learn the Bible. But this is all God wants. This is all God has. This is what God will bless when I get to heaven. You did well good with one person. There are plenty of pastors who have thousands and hundreds and, and I don't say millions, but they've had the numbers and they failed their congregation. Think about that. Oh, I know this big mega church. And they're going to probably stand before. Can they give an account of everybody's name of that mega church? Oh, how about that? Maybe God's giving me a small amount of people because I can only retain a small amount of names. I am pleased to teach in the Bible. How's that? I know a pastor, uh, I went there and there was four people who sat down there. I'd be happy with four people. If they want to learn, I'd rather have four people sit here and learn the Bible and go out and do the Bible than have 400 people. Who, uh, what? Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. Okay, uh, so temptation can limit God. Psalms 106, 14. God uses it. To say, hey, this is where you are in your life. You use it to sin against God. Psalm 106, 14. Well, when is temptation not a sin? When it's a prayer. 
and it's prayed rightly. And it's not to get you lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Psalms 106, verse 14. But lust exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. So, I don't read the Old Testament. Shame on you, because you know what you can learn from the Old Testament wilderness? What not to do. Listen, Paul, the Apostle Paul says, you know what? I fasted. And I also starved. Paul starved. But God took care of Paul. Israel starved. No, they didn't. <laughs> not with manna. At no point did Israel starve to death. Well, you say, well, they needed food. Well, if they didn't ask for, for, for God, they had the cattle that they had with them. They had the sheep. They had the food. It's like the people of India. Oh, come and feed our starving people. Feed our starving children. Is that a hamburger that just walked by? No, that's grandma. <laughs> well, kill grandma to get a hamburger. Oh. Because grandma's not the cow. The cow is a cow, and incarnation is of the devil, but the devil does not want to feed you. Israel had the food, but they wanted God to supply a table if that was not their words. There are people who are studying for the ministry, and I've known them. Oh, I want God to give me a church and a pulpit, and it's already built, and there's people already there. What about the, all the other people that had to start at a picnic table? We don't know what God's going to do with this one day. We don't know tomorrow. We know what if the Lord tarries and from this builds a church. Somebody's going to come up out of ministry school. Well, I want a church and a pulpit and my... Well, that preacher over there, he started with a handful of people. I sent him and his family. His wife and children died of a plague. And, you know, slowly by slowly, now it takes work. It takes patience. And I'm guilty of patience. So... When you don't read your Bible and don't read the Old Testament, you can learn nothing. And say, God, I am hungry. And I, all I have is a bologna sandwich. Lord, I just thank you for this bologna sandwich. Just one day, can I have a tuna fish? And then thank God when he gives you a tuna fish. And then when you get a bag of groceries, thank God, not the deliverer of the groceries. But don't go, there, there are people, they're in college, and they're, they're, they're learning a career, and they are giving foolishly a credit card while they're in college, and they're going to go buy everything that they're supposed to have when they've been 30, 40 years in the job. Now they can't, you're a fool. You reached out more of what your capabilities were. That's what people do with God. I want it now. God's like, no, 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 no. Like I said, I'd love to have a church here. Just be faithful to what we're doing right now. Be faithful with, with, with the three people here and an open Bible. And God says, hey, I think he needs more. He'll give us more. Keep praying. Keep asking people to come. There's nothing wrong with that. But if the day I get out of my car, open up my door, and I want to see 200 people here, I've stepped out of my lines. And personally, I don't want 200. Personally, I don't even want 100. Because I've seen churches. I've seen the problem. I would rather have 5, 10 people are faithful than 20 and 30. I don't want a big church. And if God would give me a church, and we start building, Lord willing, to bless me with that person. Oh yeah, I live in... I live in a, um, I can't think of Florida City. I can't think of the city here. 
I live in Holly Hill. Let's get you a group of people from Holly Hill. Let's get you start a home church in Holly Hill. You don't want to bring all those people from Holly Hill here? No. Well, I come from Port Orange. Let's get you a group of people from Port Orange and start a home church in Port Orange. You mean you don't want to bring all those people to the south? No. I don't want a big amount of people. I want enough people to congregate who will go out and do more for the Lord than do nothing for the Lord. I don't want a whole wilderness of gripers and complainers. Be content. Uh, whoa, we jump over to Matthew 4, 7, where we've been talking about. Matthew 4, 7. It's not in John. Matthew chapter 4, verse 7. Now we sing, God tempt a child of his. Abraham is his child. And God was showing Abraham. This is where you are in your Christian walk. And we seen the children of God, Israel, tempt God in sin by wanting more than what God has given them. Wanting above and beyond what God's given them. Again, like I say, I'm just stricken up for, for me that want a wife, that people's got problems with that. Hey, listen, the Lord gives me a wife. I, I want to go out and serve the Lord together. I want us to get fruit together. I want us to grow in the Lord. We need that help. Because like I grew Lisa and like I grew Tracy in the Lord, I can grow her in the Lord and she can grow me to a finer man that I need to be and healthier. Because if I want to live, if I want to live for the Lord, I need somebody to help me with a healthier diet for my diabetes. Plain and simple. Matthew four seven. And he said, Jesus said unto him, The devil, it is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. We read that in Deuteronomy six sixteen. That's what we read. Jesus turns around and uses that verse on the devil. Because to devil's satisfaction, believe it or not, God is the devil's Lord thy God, and you're not to tempt him. Now, can I throw a monkey wrench into Jehovah Witnesses again? Sure. Let's look at verse 9. And he said unto him, this is the devil, if thou be the son of God, Cast thyself down for his written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in thy hands they shall bear thee up, least at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. That's the devil attacking Jesus, correct? Jesus responds. Jesus said to him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Who is the devil talking to? Jesus. Who did Jesus just say he was? The Lord thy God. Don't you tempt me. Deuteronomy, what we read in 616 was written to God Jehovah. Despise the fact that the Jehovah Witnesses, Jesus said, quote in Deuteronomy 616, after the devil tempted Jesus, hey, don't tempt me. And I put that term to show that Jesus is saying, I am God. Christians or children of God are not allowed to tempt God, including the devil. So where do Christians get off trying to get from God more than what God wants to give them? Again, I've got to be careful here because I'm not saying don't ask God for anything. But don't ask God for too much. And then when God, you get a no, then okay, no, move on to something else. Again, with me, a wife, okay. Lord, give me the most beautiful woman ever. And I don't need a woman like that. Give me a woman that's faithful to the word, that will believe the word, that will listen to me about preaching the word and teaching the word so I can teach her the Bible correctly and together we can serve you together. 
I guarantee a lot of Christians have not asked that from God for a spouse and then they complain and gripe when they do get one. We studied last night in Proverbs about a contentious woman saying, Lord, please, don't give me one of them. I don't want that. I don't want to live in the wilderness, according to Proverbs. I'm not asking above my capability. Listen, when I read about the virtuous woman, I say, Lord, and I read a woman about Abigail, Lord, I'm not worthy of a woman like that. I'm sorry. And when I see, and I, I, I don't pay for it, but when I'm on the dating app, and I see a woman, she's slender and athletic, that ain't for me. She's too skinny for me. She's too pretty for me. I'm not setting a standard of all above the women of all. I don't want a Jezebel either. Matthew 6.13. Matthew 6.13. Jesus. This is not the Lord's prayer. This is a Lord's guidance to prayer. It's an outline on how to pray. Verse 13. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's Jesus saying this is how you pray. Lord, don't tempt me. I may fail. And if you do, get me out of the evil. I started a sin I have, I'm not going to tell anybody, but I started the other night and said, Lord God, I need your help because if you leave me alone on this, I'm going to sin. I need you to help me out of this. Mm. Lord, if you don't step in and help me with this sin, I'm going to sin it, and I know I'm going to sin it. I need you to take over. Now, am I asking for God for something? Absolutely. Am I tempting God for something that, uh, it's extreme and elaborate for my... Absolutely not, because it's for God's honor and glory. So, see, the temptation is going against God. When you want something elaborate and great and wonderful and absolutely... I mean, there are some little prayers all over the world today. Lord, you just saved my parents. Lord, it, it, it has to be healed or they're going to take the whole thing off. Lord, if the government or the religion catches me, we're going to be tortured. But we're all, Lord, we want magnificent. We want great ivory showers and great marbles of stone. And we want a great church. And if God gave you a great church, He'd probably lead you astray. As many churches are. You know, Billy Graham in the early years was a great preacher. I love to hear the meetings of Billy Graham in the early years. But then he got bigger, he got bigger, and he started getting along with the president, he started getting along with the movie star, and he started getting the glamour, and then he became vile and unused of God. And you can have any Bible you want, you can go to any church you want. That's not the original Billy Graham. Billy Graham stepped into an assembly where he ought not to step in, and it ruined him. I could ask God right now, okay, from South Daytona Beach, Lord God, I want a thousand people congregation. That thousand people may turn my heart and may turn the truth away from God. I may have to conform. I don't want to conform. I've already conformed in some aspects. And I don't like it. So temptation is you want a far and beyond what God... No, I don't want you to have that. Oh, Lord God. But prayer is, I think I need it. I have a request. And again, I know I need a wife. But I don't need an extravagant woman. 
She won't stay with me. She needs to be somebody who loves you and wants to serve you. Lord, I, I need a little more groceries, but I don't need to stay in the in the in the in, the, in I don't know. I don't even know what good meat is. That's how bad it is. I don't know what whatever the great meat is. I don't want that. Like I said, I don't, I'm not a steak either. I'm not a seafood. Either. Give me barbecue ribs, and I'll be happy. Some people want steak. You're not always going to get steak. You are, you're, sto you're a spoiled brat. Uh, Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Verse 1. Matthew 16, verse 1. The Pharisees also and the Sadducees came tempting, desiring him that they would show him a sign from heaven. There's the religious group. They're coming up to Jesus. Give us a great sign. There's your Pentecostals. Would you say, I don't know, I'm filled with the Spirit. Uh, you're filled with something. You know what some religions out there do? They want that great, wonderful sign. And God's up in heaven saying, I ain't speaking to you. <laughs> That's the devil. I want God to give... Listen, I've, I've had people on the street. I want God to come speak to me and I'll get saved. I said, brother, God spoke to him in Exodus chapter 20 and no, no one in the end. But... Two men, Joshua and Caleb, got into the promised land. There are people who want more from God than what God is going to give them. That's a temptation. That's a sin. And this is a religious group of people. And they're tempting Jesus who is God. God is not going to give you that, that, that shooting star. God is, though he did it for Joshua, he's not going to hold the sun in your sky, in your in the sky. Last week at the farmer's market, God did not stop the rain while I was preaching. Well, you know, maybe God had a reason for the rain to come that I had no idea. Maybe the rain protected me from something. Like today, I saw I saw rain clouds. I said, "Lord God, please, no rain today. No rain this weekend for the public ministries." Now I'm asking God. I am not. Oh God, you know it's me. You can't have it rain, so I could preach. No, if it rains, it's going to rain. If it doesn't rain, thank you, God, I was able to preach. Thank you, God, and that's Rachel in the car. We were to preach for an hour and a half, maybe two hours last week. Don't expect God to turn the whole universe over to you. You can ask. Now, it's like this with the rain. And this is what I learned in one of my classes. Lord, I don't want it to rain on my picnic today, our birthday party. There may be a farmer across the saying, Lord God, I need the rain for my crops. What your good pleasure for your prayer is, if answered, may not be for the good pleasure for somebody else. Don't expect God. Ask Him, say, God, as far as the weather, rain, Lord, please, no rain. For and if He doesn't give you the rain, you're allowed to go full time, thank God. And if He gives you one hour or that, and then it rains, say, Lord God, thank you. We've had it rain many times on us. Matthew 19.3. Don't expect God to, to move all the heavens for you. I've met preachers like that. I've met Christians who are like that. I have got, you know, for their fellow, God has stopped the rain for our fellowship this, this weekend. 
Maybe it was some others praying they were, they were going to go out and pass out gospel tracts. Maybe it was their prayer. Maybe somebody else was praying that we were, were doing a public ministry. Maybe God answered their prayers for us to preach. No, maybe it's not you. See, when we think it's all about me, we could be wrong. Matthew 9, 3, the Pharisees, oh boy, there they go, also came, temp, came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? So, here is religion. And they're tempting Jesus here with a question. And he answers their question. But their question was not really a question. It was only to try to catch Jesus up in his words. When you're praying to God, it is good to use God's scripture. I do it all the time. Again, Proverbs says, God shows favor to a man and giving him a what? Say, Lord God, I want that favor. But don't you dare go quote out of scripture, I can do all through Christ, all things through Christ which strengthens me. Now I get some things you can't do without Christ's strength. You want to ask my personal question. Don't come to God with stupid questions to catch God offhand. It's not going to work. And I really can't give you the answers on, because I really never question God to catch God on His words. But the Pharisees tried. And you would look at that question, well, that's an interesting question. The question was only to get Jesus in a trap against the Scriptures. Don't ask Jesus, don't ask God to do something that would violate his own word. I guarantee that happens many a time in the Laodicean church age. Acts 5.1. Acts 5.1. Again, there is a difference between asking in prayer and then, oh, God. And when you're tempting God, you're sinning. And there's really no ground for an individual. Acts by one. Because I don't know what your ground is. Because it may be a worthy prayer. It may not be. You gotta ask God, God, what I'm asking you. Am I worthy to be asking this prayer or am I sinning? That's a hard thing because you don't want God to answer you know on that one. But a certain man named Anubis and Sapphira's wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it, she knew, and brought a certain part and laid it to the Pharisee's feet. But Peter said unto Anubis, Why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and keep part of the price of the land? While it, is, it remained, was it not thy own? And after it sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto God, man, but unto God. Now, God is also the Holy Spirit, verse 3. Verse 9. Peter said unto her, his wife, How is it you agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Now, they sinned against God. What was their sin? They sold, and I'm going to just give a value. They sold their house and property, I'm going to say $100, whatever it was. All right? They showed up to church and they gave $90, saying they gave $100. And all the people go, Woo, you're good, oh, great you are. Oh, oh what? They lied. And they lied to the congregation. And that is tempting the Spirit of God. 
When you go before the church and you lie to the congregation, oh, no, that doesn't happen. And you get joy out of the congregation, but you lied. Lamb, your dog is right here. Did you see my little dog? He's right here. I don't think he likes the sun. You have tempted the Holy Spirit. You have sinned against God by lying to the congregation. The moral of, the, of, the, of that one is don't lie to your church. Don't lie to other Christians. Even if it's a white polka dotted lie. Don't tell your congregation that December 25th is Jesus' birthday because it's not. And I can go off on all kinds of lies in the church and I'll behave myself. And if I were to bite my tongue, I wouldn't be able to talk no more. But I can tell you all kinds of lies. You want to know another lie in the church I've been taught out of school? All eyes closed, heads bowed. Yeah, I see that hand back there. And there was no hand at all. But the pastor got somebody to raise their hand for... No, they didn't. Mm -hmm. And I've even seen with my own eyes in the church. I saw that hand. Like, I didn't see no hand. I was looking. I like when they say all eyes are closed and all heads are bowed. I'm like... No, they're not. My name, I'm looking out of the corner of my eye as much as I can see. You're lying. Don't lie to the congregation. Don't lie to the church because you're lying to the Holy Spirit. Don't put that empty envelope, offering envelope in the plate having people think you put money in it. That's a lie. Uh, that was that. 1 Corinthians 7 5. 1 Corinthians 7 5. So we're talking about acts against God. And I am not forbidden in any way, shape, and out if it's right before God to ask God for a petition because Jesus said, Ask anything in my Father's name, in my name of the Father. Ask, seek, and not. But make sure what you're asking is not above and beyond. Acts 7, verse 5. Defraud ye not one another, set to be consent for a time, that ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer, and come together, that Satan tempt you not for your incontency. Video, that's a mouthful. That's Satan tempting, a marriage. You know what that is? I'll tell you what it is. Well, honey, you and I, we're not going to eat for X amount of days because we're going to fast the Lord. Okay, that sounds good. That verse also said, a husband and wife said, you know what? We're going to have no marriage bed. We're going to set a certain amount of days. Don't go beyond what you cannot cable. But you know what? We're not going to have any marriage bed relation for three, four days. For God and for answer. And the Bible says, okay, at the end of three or four days, you get, because Satan's going to put that woman in front of your husband's eye, Satan's going to put that man in front of your wife's eye, because you two haven't had the marriage bed, he's going to tempt you. Mm -hmm. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye. Well, she hasn't given it to me. Yeah, but you agree. That's Satan coming into marriage with a husband and wife, seeking God, seeking by prayer and by fasting. Other than food. I haven't heard that one taught in churches a long, long time. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10 13. There has no temptation taken you but such as common to man. You will be tempted. Don't say, oh, I'll never be tempted. God is faithful, who will suffer you to be tempted, will not suffer you to be tempted above ye are able. God will allow that temptation. But he will not give you a temptation too hard you can't handle. He also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. 
Born again, saved Christian, you are apt to be tempted. And God may give you that temptation as he gave to Abraham. He may allow that temptation. Satan comes into your life. And he may make that temptation so hard, but he ain't going to break you with that temptation. I guarantee you'll be start praying to God to get victory over it. That wouldn't be a wrong prayer. And there are foolish enough people out there, oh, I'm never, you can't be tempted or I'm not tempted. What did Paul just say? There has no temptation taking you. There will be temptations. And the devil will use lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And God will come into your life to say, I want to show you what you're doing wrong. I want to show you how, how well you're doing. God showed me three weeks ago, three or four weeks now, time goes by quick, how well I was doing the Lord. I had a cop threaten to arrest me. I just said, mm. you know what? I'm going to go home. I'm going to call my lawyer. If he says I, I can be here, I'll be here. If he says I, I'm wrong, I apologize to you. I'm sorry I'm wrong. Listen, I didn't throw fists. I didn't say go ahead and arrest me. I didn't fight. You know what God showed me in that temptation that came my way? You handled it well. Now there's another temptation that God, I can say this one. God comes up to me, I've gotten seven red lights. You ain't doing so well with patience, are you? Shut up, Lord. Give me the next green ones. Red lights may be a temptation of God to say, you know what? You ain't doing so well with patience, are you? Shut up, Lord. I don't want to hear it. Uh huh. Yeah. There's no traffic lights to be a temptation, did you? How well are you doing? I'll put that guy right in front of your car going five miles per hour in a 20. Let's just see how well you do. God may put things in our life to say, you need some work. God may put things in our life to, look at you, you're a good boy. You're a good girl. Look at that. The devil may put things in our life to be, I want you to quit. I thought about it. I thought about it, but I haven't done it. The devil may put things in our life to say, hey, you know, he may put that flesh. You know, why does that keep? Why does that one thing keep happening to me in my life? I keep. That's lust of the flesh, pride of life, or the lust of the eyes. That's the devil trying to get you down. That may not stop to the day you die, and God may continue to allow it. He may make a way to escape. Maybe you know, turn your head or whatever you have to do for that sin. The devil knows where to attack you. And he knows when to least expect to get you. And he knows when the best time to get you. And we can ask God for things, but let's not get the best things. Let's do what little what God has done with it. Little as much when God is in it is to him. And God may find us with little as much. You know what? He's been faithful. I'll give him a little more. I'll give him a little more. Galatians 4.14 And don't, please, don't, 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 Galatians 4.14 Say, I will never be attempted. I've heard people say it. I heard Christians say it. What started this lesson? When we came to John, what, what started this lesson? Did we not go to Matthew chapter 4 and the devil tempted Jesus? And then you're, you as a Christian is going to have the nerve to say, I can never be tempted. Jesus was tempted. Paul just told us in 1 Corinthians 10, which was the life verse of my first wife, Lisa, you will be tempted. Don't be foolish enough to say, I'll never be tempted. And the devil will be like, <laughs> let me at him. And God's like, yeah, go ahead, because he wants to be an idiot. 
<laughs> Go for it. Throw him a little more extra for me. That's what the devil did with Job, and, and God said, Go ahead, devil. And God knew the self righteousness of Job. Go for it. But Galatians 4 4, 4 14. And my temptation, this is Paul, which was in my flesh, would ye despise not nor reject it. Paul had a, dis, a temptation. Oh, are you above Jesus Christ? Are you above Paul if you get no temptation? I'll tell you, the Pentecostals will say, not me. I'll tell you what the Bible says, uh-huh, yeah, you, Jesus, and Paul. Paul is one of the, I mean, we ought not be putting Paul on a pedestal, but Paul was one of those great Christians. And look what he just said there. My temptation. And that's not the singing group of the 70s or 60s, whatever they were. I forgot, was there four tempting? Something like that. It shows how old I am. Now see, now, now, now wait a minute. You see how quick, you see how slick the devil is? I read about temptation, the devil put in my head the four temptations singing. I just had them singing in my head. As, as a little boy growing up, I've heard them singing. But the devil said, ha, ah, temptation, good. And it started singing in my head. That's the devil. That's why you don't listen to that music. Because it gets in there. You know how many times I've gone into the store, and I've heard that music, and I find myself singing, like, oh, man, what am I doing? That's the devil. He got you. He gets you. Uh, first, first Thessalonians 3, 5. First Thessalonians 3, 5. First Thessalonians 3, 5. So God will tempt you for good. We're not to tempt God. And the devil tempts. Boy, are we in a realm. Is it God or the devil? It may be yourself tempting you too. Now come on. You're in the store and you see that chocolate cake. Oh, I, love. I don't think that's God. And I don't think it's the devil. I think you just put yourself on a diet and you're like, oh. Because God would be like, that's not good for your diabetes. I ain't going to give you that. And the devil would be like, why would I tempt you with chocolate cake? You're not going to lose that weight. It ain't going to happen. You're a chocolate cake. That's your temptation. First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 5. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith. By, at least by some means, the tempter has tempted you, and our labor being vain, the tempter has tempted you. Gee, I wonder who that is. That's the devil. You know what one of the titles of the devil is? He's called the tempter. Lust of the flesh, mm -hmm. the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's why we did that study greatly. <laughs> because that's what we're looking at right now. And you are to know yourself. Where is the devil going to attack you? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. One thing, two things, or all three. And that's between you and God, but the devil knows also. And if it's a temptation to sin, don't you dare blame God. The God made me do it. The devil made me do it. No, that chocolate cake may be because you want it. Mm -hmm. You know? You stopped off at McDonald's to get the french fries because you wanted them. God didn't say go to McDonald's to get the fries. The devil didn't say get the fries. You wanted the french fries. That's your temptation. We're in a great realm here. I'm going to take the great spiritual forces of the devil. you got enough spiritual forces of yourself to fight. And then the devil, and then God in your life. First Thessalonians 6, 9. First Thessalonians 6, 9. Okay. 
right? Guess what? Oh, that's 1 Timothy 6.9. Scribal error. I don't know how to write. 1 Timothy 6.9. I write terribly. I need somebody who can write for me. <laughs> Lisa was going to put all my type, all my notes out for me. When she died. But... Don't pray for me for a wife like that because she saw my handwriting. She'd leave me. Because I, even I can't read my handwriting. It's terrible. Mm. That's why I use it. You know, people, will you, will you, will you always on a computer because you would not want to read my writing. I've had pastors yell at me for my writing. Oh, I know, I told you. First Timothy 6, 9. But they that will be rich, you want to be rich? Fall into temptation. Don't want to be rich. By the way, he's writing to Christians. Don't be don't want to be rich. Now, if God makes you rich, glory to God, bless God. But don't want to be rich because you will fall into temptation. So when you get a Christian, well, I want to be rich, I want to be rich, I want to win the lottery. He hasn't read his Bible. Be content. Listen, my prayer is, God, give me enough to pay my bills and don't make me so rich that I'm going to deny you Proverbs chapter 30. Now, I'm praying to the Lord right now. I'm like, Lord, you know, I, I, my budget is great. It is. My, God, God and my budget right now are great. Lord, I could, if I want to start dating another woman, I need a little extra money. I'm not asking for a billion, trillion dollars. Just a little more. I don't want to be rich. Because Proverbs says you're going to get a lot of friends. The prodigal son, he had money, you know, he had all kinds of friends, but they weren't friends. I don't have many friends right now. I don't need friends coming up to me because they're being friends just because I got money. I don't need that. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. Uh, Hebrews 2.18, I hope. Another. He wrote. Eighteen. Two eighteen. Not two eight. Two eighteen. Wow, I write terrible. For in that he, Jesus, himself suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Jesus Christ was tempted. We're going to be tempted because Jesus was tempted. He can help us and guide us and love us through temptation. You're going through a temptation in your life? Go to Jesus. Say, Lord, I'm going to use scripture. You were tempted by the devil, Jesus. So am I. Help me find the scripture that you, the same scripture in my life that you tapped the devil with, with the scripture you had. Help me with the scripture and help me get battle over this temptation. Go to Jesus. Plain and simple. Uh, 4.15, Hebrews 4.15. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but was in all points tempted, Jesus, Jesus, like as we are, yet without sin. Again, if Jesus was tempted, you will be tempted. And because he was tempted, when you are tempted, you can be helped and aided by your God who was tempted. You got to help. Hebrews 11.30, I hope that's two. Two or seven. Uh, 37. 37. Hebrews 11.37 They were stoned. Were you stoned? Were sawed asunder, cut in half. 
were tempted, were slain with the sword. God's people suffered all kinds of sufferings. And one of the sufferings they had is the same thing. I Listen, I may never be stoned to death. They may not take a sword and kill me. But the same temptations that my brethren in Christ and the Old Testament saints may happen to me will happen to us. James 1-2. Uh-oh. James 1-2. James 1 2. Come on, James. You gotta be you know, really. James is written to tribulation saints. The contents. You know how bad the tribulation is gonna be? We're not gonna be there. But writing to men in the tribulation, James says in 1 2, my brethren, count it all joy when when ye fall into divers different kinds of temptations. You know what James has said there? When you're being tempted, <laughs> oh, that was so great, wonderful. Uh, you got to give me another Bible because I don't like what that said. Because the temptation may be that God is working on you. Or the temptation is the devil hates you. <laughs> James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. You want to be blessed? Endure your temptation. Don't quit. For when he is tried, the temptation, he shall receive a crown of life. You endure in your temptations, and you don't quit, you're going to get a crown of life. I tell you, the devil's working on me with that one right now. And which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, or God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he with man. When every man is tempted, he's drawn away with his lust and enticed. Yeah, God is not going to tempt you to make you sin. God's going to tempt you to improve you. Now, if you've got a temptation that will draw you to sin, if it was God, you fail. Or it was the devil or your own self. But God's not ever going to, I'm going to make him so he can sin. That's not God. If you're charged with sin and it is of God, you fail God, not God. Plain and simple. If it's the devil, 1 Peter 1.6. One, two more. 1 Peter 1 6. Okay. 1 6. Wherein we greatly rejoice. Uh, though now for a season. The Bible says when, when, when the devil lost, left Jesus, left him for a season. If need be. Ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Oh, I, I'm just feeling so terrible. I, I got all this stuff on me. I, 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 oh, bear up and step up and lift. Yeah, yeah, you're falling from grace. No, Peter said, Peter said, you might be in heaviness because of your temptations. It's okay. You are under a burden. Though James says, be joyful. That's hard, isn't it? Paul said, rejoice evermore. But some of your temptations may bring you down. That's scripture. And somebody keeps around me, oh, you're always, you know, you're always down in the dumps. And, hey, I've got a lot of temptations. I've got a lot of problems right now. Mm. You know how close I'm coming to say, Lord, give him some of it? I don't. Look at Job. Chapter 2, he began his rebuke. Temptation is not always sunshine. And 
No. Second Peter 2.2, 2, last place. This is a great last place for this study. Second Peter 2.2. 2. Second Peter 2.2. 2. Two nine. Wow, that's a terrible oh. nine. Pew. I need a decipher. I may not write Hebrew and Greek. I write. <laughs> the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations. You want to get out of your temptations, though they may be heavy and burdensome. Let the Lord help you. Amen. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm in a temptation. Say, Lord Jesus, I've read my Bible. It said you were tempted too. Lord Jesus said Abraham was tempted. He said, Lord Jesus, all those that were in the Old Testament and all those of the church age have been tempted. When you're tempted, and listen, you're going to do this, I've done this, and I do this. I'm the only one in the world. No, you're not. And it's part of life. Whether you're saved or lost, you're going to have temptation. Give it to the Lord. Serve the Lord. Pray. But don't sin in temptation and asking God above and beyond. So God will tempt you to do well in your life. To improve in your life. To show you what you're doing in your life. The devil will tempt you to bring you down. You will tempt to sin against God. And then temptation is a normal characteristic of our life. Welcome to life. Because whether you're saved or you're lost, you're going to have temptation. And only those in Christ. Lord God the Father, I just thank you for this study, Lord God. And I plead the blood of my sins. Lord God, I hope I'm not asking above and beyond. But Lord, hopefully my... My prayers are for your glory, for my help, Lord God. And bless this time, Lord, and the, the public means of the, Lord, of the Lord Jesus Christ, the bikers, today and tomorrow, Lord. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen.